We'll need the pulpit mic, the pulpit mic. Amen. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I am overwhelmed by this great opportunity to be here. When Brother Halvin was singing that song about being blessed, the first thing that came to my mind was that I wouldn't even be here today if not because people like you over here in the U.S. sent a missionary 27 years ago, came to Nigeria, and gave me the gospel as a 12-year-old boy. I trusted Jesus as my Savior, and I'm here today. And so I want to take that time to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for missions. Thank you for the missionaries you pray for. Thank you for the missionaries you support. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to come here. Thank you, Brother Eli, for recommending me. And uh, it is just too much for me. But I believe that God has a purpose for me being here today. And because he made everything happen in his own way. Uh, I'm from Abuja. That's where our church is, Grace and Glory Baptist Church. I work with missionary Mark Holmes, and he's my pastor. And uh, uh, we have uh, a seminary. I teach in the seminary. And we also have a youth camp. Uh, uh, many of you know about the youth camp. It's called SMITE, uh, the Summer Missionary Institute for Training in Evangelism. And that ministry has been around here for over 40 years. And we've been doing SMITE in Africa now for about 10 years. And I've had the privilege of uh, helping to set up the camps and conduct uh, SMITE. Uh, we conduct three uh, camps, SMI camps across Nigeria. Basically what SMI does is we teach young people uh, and how to conduct Bible clubs and how to evangelize children using the wordless book and we've seen uh, thousands of children come to Jesus Christ because of SMI. Uh, we're now in two countries. We, we're in Ghana and Kenya, we're hoping to go to Tanzania with Brother White, and uh, uh, also uh, to Uganda, and so you pray for us. I'm so excited about the opportunity, and just like Pastor said, we have a mission board that is uh, really indigenous, and our goal is to get churches behind national pastors to plant more churches across Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria is uh, a, a country that has a lot of people and uh, over 200 million uh, people in Nigeria. And it is said that uh, uh, out of every four Africans, one is a Nigerian. And so uh, we're that many that uh, uh, you need to start asking when he says, are you a Nigerian? Uh, but uh, 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 and, and so it is our goal to see this happen, and it's our goal also uh, not only to plant churches across Nigeria, but one day to send a Nigerian missionary outside the shores of Nigeria. And so these are great things that God is doing uh, back home in Nigeria, and I'm so glad to be here. So I bring you greetings from uh, Abuja and from my family. Uh, I have a wife and three children. And uh, we're so thankful for what God is doing. This is overwhelming. I must tell you, I've never preached to a crowd like this before. Uh, and I'm amazed. I'm so thankful for this opportunity. And uh, this morning, I, I hope that God would use my message to be a blessing to you. Amen. And uh, uh, please, I want you, don't look at what I could do. Don't look at what I could say. But look at what God can yeah. say to you today. Yeah. And I believe if you do so, that you will be blessed. And so if you, if you don't mind, take your Bibles and turn to the book of Judges. Judges chapter number 7. And uh, if you find your place, you mind if you stand, we'll read uh, from verses number 1 through uh, 8. Judges chapter 7, verses 1 through 8. The Bible says, Then Jeroboam, who was Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the eel of Moreh in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. 
lest Israel vow themselves against me, saying, My own hand had saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart hurriedly from Mount Gilead. And there return of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remain ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there, and it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, These shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, These shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So it brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one the lappet of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappet, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And a number of them the lapped, putting their hands to their mouth with three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men the lapped will I save you. And deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go, every man unto his place. Verse number 8. So the people took victuals in their hands, in their trumpets. And they sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent. And retained those 300 men. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. That's the front line there. Amen. The enemies were just right there. That's right, yeah. You see, if we were to look at it, this conference has been on for about 15 years. And everyone comes here almost every year. And we're looking forward to what God would do in our lives. How God would speak to the messages. And we're all excited about it. I believe strongly that that could represent uh, uh, this uh, in this passage this morning, people come into the camp and, 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 and signing off for the battle. Uh, before now, uh, Gideon had gone out and, and let the words out and people were just signing off. They wanted to fight. They wanted to uh, attack the Midianites. The Bible says that there were 32,000 people that came. Just like we have people here. That's good. The people sign up. People wanted to be at our time, your conference. People want to be at uh, our time and, 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 and get involved in the, uh, the front lines. They sign up. They came there. And they were excited about coming. Uh, uh, they wanted to see God do great things through them. I have no doubt this morning that you want God to do something through you. I have no doubt this morning that you are looking forward to what God would do through your life. And so they came. And when they came, uh, they, they gathered, and, and God started uh, 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 talking to Gideon and saying, you know what, I think you're just too many. You're just too many. Does that mean that God does not want to use everybody? No. God wants to use everybody, but he may not use everybody for some reason. It's right there. The Bible says, uh, uh, you're going to find out in, in the same passage, and God started saying, well, all right, those that are afraid and fearful should go home. And we began to see the numbers of people going down, good. going down, and going down. And God said, well, the other reason is so that when Israel won the battle, they may not say, my whole hand has won this battle. You see, God knows our heart. He wants to use us. But when we have the wrong reason in our heart, he may not use us. And so, as we all gather here uh, this week and this morning, I want to share with you. I want you to see that there can only be three kinds of people that come to the front lines. Three kinds of people that come to the front lines. And that's the title of my message this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you for... Lord, the privilege to be here. Yes, Lord. Lord, I know it's not by accident. God, you've made it possible. Yes, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would Anointing. speak through me. Yes. Lord, I want to be nothing else but a mouthpiece. Yes. Lord, speak to our hearts and help us to well, understand the intent of this message. We ask your blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. May be seated. I do this every year. I, I, I have the privilege to do this every year. 
conducting our, our smite home in Nigeria and in Kenya and in Ghana. A lot of young people want to come. Well, they just come. They gather. They're, they're excited about what's going to happen. They're excited about reaching children uh, with the gospel. They're excited about the preaching. They're also excited about the food. Amen. Uh, I, I, I look forward to Smite every year uh, because it's always not only that we get to serve God, we get to have fun. Uh, we get to have fun the right way. And so people gathered and they were here at this camp. Uh, they were ready to fight just like we all gathered here. Uh, and, and, and truly, it was the front line for them. That's right. Their enemies were just down the valley, the Bible says. And, and they were just about to march right into uh, uh, the camp of the enemy and fight. Right. But what do we see? I believe there are only three groups of people, three kinds of people that come to the front lines. Number one, I want you to see the first group or the first uh, people that we see is the fearful. The fearful. In verse number uh, uh, three, the Bible says, uh, God said unto Gideon, and he said, Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful right. and afraid, let him return and depart early from, the, uh, from Mount Gilead. The Bible identified a group of people for us. You see, everybody came. We don't know what's in their heart. Everybody came. Well, everyone wants to fight the battle. But God revealed something to us Amen. that there's a group of people among all those that have come. And they are the fearful ones. Amen. They're afraid. Hey, uh, uh, they, they came to the camp. They sign up. They knew they're going to, uh, to fight. They knew the enemies were behind them. They knew what was going to happen. But God said, there's still some people here that have got fears. There's still some people here that have got, uh, 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 they're afraid. There's some things they're afraid about. Now watch this. The Bible says there were 32,000 people that came, that enrolled. And when God said, let the fearful go back. Do you know how many people went back? 22,000. Wow. 22,000 out of 32,000. Just like that. God said, well, if you're afraid, if you're fearful, well, I need to go back now. And the number dropped, 22,000. And then you got 10,000 people left. And from 10,000 people, we see God going through the process again of eliminating people that could not stand. And finally, God chose him the 300 that were going to fight the battle. Listen, this morning... The fearful and the afraid ones were hacks to go home. They gave up signing up to come to the camp. They were excited. They wanted to be there. But they left anyway. They went home. They were afraid. Hey, uh, there are people that sign up for this conference. Hey, uh, what's going to happen uh, uh, today that's going to make you decide and say, well, I don't want to stay anymore in this conference. Right. What's going to get you afraid or make you fearful? And you, you just don't want to listen to the preaching. You don't want God to speak to you. Yeah. What are you afraid of? Amen. You see, the fearful ones, they made it to the camp. They made it there. But there were those that actually made it there. But they never made it to the battlefield. They never made it to the battlefield. Listen, uh, we can come to this conference. You can come to this conference every year. You can listen to great messages. You can uh, 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 surrender or do something uh, that the preacher wants you to do, that God wants you to do. But listen, the battlefield is not in this conference. The battlefield is when we leave this conference and go back to our home churches and go back to our homes. That's where the battlefield is. They have fears, but not the fear of the Lord. Someone said that this week. There's a big difference in uh, uh, having the fear of the Lord and actually being fearful. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You see, those people had fears. Pastor, it's amazing that the number dropped from 32,000 to 10,000. Why? Because they have fears. Let me get at it this morning. There's some of you here, you've got fears. You're fears. Well, you may not be afraid of a lot of things. As an African, there are things I'm afraid of. 
This morning when uh, we were in the, uh, uh, the, the preaching competition section and then the power went off. <laughs> I always have the idea that you never lose power in America. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, Brother Belair has been to Nigeria many, many times. You cannot have 24 hours constant electricity supply. You cannot. You can have for five hours and be in darkness for about 10 hours. You get sweaty, uh, another uh, 20 hours. And so when the power went off, I thought, it must be me. I'm like Jonah. I brought, <laughs> I brought, <laughs> I brought you bad luck today. And then I thought, wow, that's amazing. And then, praise the Lord, the power came back on. Amen. There are things that you, know, you don't have to worry about. You don't worry about the power. You don't worry about the roads. You don't worry about the water that's running. You don't worry about the food. Hey, there are a lot of things that well, I, I can be afraid of uh, in my home country. Uh, there are a lot of things that, uh, as a young person, uh, 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 young people in Nigeria can get afraid of and say, well, I don't want to serve God because I'm afraid of that thing. I'm afraid of that. Uh, well, I don't want to do something for God. Come on now. It may be different, but you know what? We all have fears. That's right. Yeah, you're right. We all have fears. Listen, I don't know what your fears are this morning. Hey, uh, maybe your fear this week is that God is going to change your life. Yeah. There are people who are afraid to come to this conference because they know God is working there. Yeah. They know that God can change their life. Right. And they're afraid to go. Maybe your fear uh, is that God can call you to preach. Yeah. You know well enough that God's power is present here. You know well enough that God's power uh, uh, is present in the preaching uh, we heard yesterday. And, and maybe God is already taking hold of, of your heart and speaking to your heart and saying, well, I want you to be a preacher. But you're afraid. Yeah. He could call me to preach. I don't want to go to a hard time, you conference. Some have fears that they can give up some lifestyle and habits. Yeah, there it is. So if I go to a conference, I have to give up my bad music. If I go to a conference, I have to give up my friends. If I go to a conference, I have to give up this. I have to give up that lifestyle. Some are afraid. Some are afraid that God can use them. You see, when you give God your life, well, he could use it whichever way he wants. But you've seen God use other people's life. We watched the video. I was overwhelmed by that video, what that man is doing right there at the front lines. Yeah. God is using him. Amen. And some say, well, I can't do that. Well, because of that, I don't want to go to that camp. I don't want to go to that conference. What is your fear? Some of fears uh, uh, that uh, the, the, the hurtly things they have to give up for the cause of Christ. I respect every American missionary that ever comes to Africa. Because literally, you give up your comfort. I mean, they put me up there uh, since Monday. Pastor's been very, very comfortable. I enjoy it. For someone to leave all this thing and say, I'm going to Africa, it's a big sacrifice. There'll be some, they're still afraid of giving that up. Say, well, I can give up my, I can give up my good roads. I can give up my uh, uh, constant electricity supply. I can give up my uh, medical uh, uh, access uh, that I've got. I can give this up. I can go because I'm afraid if I go, I would have to give this up. Wow. I know what your fears are this morning. Some are afraid that God can call them to Africa. Come on. You need missionaries. I think God brought me here this week to tell you that we need you. Yes. We need you. We need you. God needs you. Those people need you. Hey, those people are dying and going to hell. I need you. They need you to come. And listen, people are dying and perishing. They need people to come and rescue them. Don't be afraid that God can call you there. Some have fears that God can control their lives. You know, if I get into the will of God, sometimes we don't want to err 
issues about the will of God because we think when it comes to the will of God, it means, listen, God's going to control your life. Where would you rather be? In the will of God or outside the will of God? I would rather be in the will of God. It was one time I was traveling, 2014. I was on a mission trip to East Africa. And then we would go on bus from one country to another. Because they're, they're landlocked countries. They're very close and you could just travel. And so we, we got on the bus from South Sudan and making our way back to Uganda. And in the middle of nowhere it had rained and it got very muddy. And the bus got stuck. The driver tried everything to get out of it. He was going nowhere. So he said, well, we have to stay here till tomorrow morning and get help. We were in that bush for nearly 14 hours. The middle of nowhere. I mean, that's my first time traveling through that road. And I sat beside a, 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 a Ugandan or someone who was traveling. And I heard him. He said, he said, we have finished. I said, what do you mean? He said, this place is a terrible place. This place is a dangerous place. I said, how? How is that? He said, you know, there's a, uh, it started scaring me. He said, there's a terrorist that used to go about and slaughter people. And said, he said, this is his route. I was afraid. I was afraid. And that night, we, we sat in the bus and just slept in the bus. I said, Lord, you take care of us. If it's your will for me to be here, to come on this trip and preach to people, Lord, take care of us. And God did. Amen. It took care of us. Listen, hey, fears. There are people that have got fears. We should fear God, but we should not have fears that cause us to run from him. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it said, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Listen, God does not want you to be afraid of what you have to do for him. He'll go with you if he has called you. He'll be with you if he has asked you to do something. He'll give you the strength that you need to do it. Amen. Same 2014. I already told a story on Tuesday. As I was traveling from this country to another country, I made my way to the country of Djibouti. And I was expecting that I would get into the country to witness, to preach. And that was where the most scary thing I've ever had in my life happened. The immigration took my passport from me. And they put me in a room all by myself. Never told me why. Did not ask me for the question, just say, follow me, and took me right there. I thought it was, you know, because at the time our country was experiencing terrorists, Boko Haram, and all of that. So I thought, well, maybe they thought I'm a Boko Haram or something like that. But nobody was talking to me. And they left me in the room. And I was afraid. And I thought, well, if they come and start to search my bag or hack me, uh, what, what, why am I in this country? I actually came to preach. What am I going to tell them? I, I was bothered. I had a friend that was supposed to meet me in the same country so we could preach and evangelize. And he started messaging me and started telling me, I said, listen, if they question you, don't tell them you're a pastor. He said, don't tell them you came here to preach. He said, this is a dangerous place. We're just here to, everything we're doing there is on the ground. Have you ever been there in your life? I felt like, all right, this is the hand. I was just waiting for someone to open the door and start questioning me. But thankfully, they didn't do that. They didn't search my bag. They didn't do anything. They were only interested in sending me back home. The following morning, they uh, put my passport back in my hand and put me on an airplane and deported me back to Ethiopia. When I sat on that airplane, I was ready to go home. I said, I'm done on this trip. I'm done on this trip. Hey, and, and God started encouraging my heart and saying, no, you can move on. You, you can continue. Hey, uh, what, what happened that year? Well, I went on. Uh, even though hey, there, were, there were dangerous things that happened on the trip, but God was still with me. Amen. Listen, if you're in the will of God, if God will be with you. No matter what comes your way, he will be with you. Amen. 
You know what happens to the fearful? They come to the camp, but that is as far as they can go. They just come, that, that's all. They do not get out of the pew to come out and make decision. Hey, they, they, they never make any decision. Hey, are they, well, the, the, the preaching is great, the food is great, the fun is great, but listen, that's as far as they can go, and because of that, they never make it to the battlefield. We have been called. We need to get to the battlefield. Hey, no matter what it is, God wants you to be at the battlefield. The fearful. The second group of people are the faithful. The faithful. Verse number four and six. The Bible said, the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water and I will try them there uh, the, uh, for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, they shall go with thee. The same shall go with thee. And whosoever I say unto thee, the same shall not go with thee. The same shall not go. You know the story. And uh, what happened? God started testing them and God said well you all gathered and then the, the 10,000 people now gathered and God said well I want to see if you can drink this way and those that drink the uh, the other way will have to stay and out of those you know how many people qualify 300 300 and, and the rest of the people uh, went back home. And, and the 300, listen, uh, 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 they stayed. And, and it was the 300 that God used to fight the battle. It was the 300 that God used to have the victory. It was the 300 that God used hey, uh, uh, to, to rescue Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Why? Because they were faithful. The faithful ones allow God to test them. Right. The faithful ones allow God to use them. Listen, the faithful ones tonight hey, can only be uh, the ones that were not afraid to go home or quit. The faithful ones tonight, uh, this morning, uh, are the ones that went through the test and passed it. The faithful ones this morning are those who come to our time youth conference every year and never miss it. Now listen, the faithful ones are the ones that come to the conference and they keep to every decision they make at the conference. Why? Because they're faithful to it. What decision did you make last year? What decision did you make two years ago? And uh, the moment you leave this place, you never follow through with your decision. The faithful ones follow through with their decision. There are those who follow through when they said that they would serve the Lord. There are those, hey, listen, who would consider to go on a mission trip, amen? The faithful one. Hey, there are those who, when they have the chance to quit, but they didn't make that decision. There are those who help their pastors in the boss ministry, in the Bible club, in the Sunday school class, and so in. in. The faithful ones. There are those who go back to their home churches and serve God with their lives. Amen. William Curry stayed faithful many, many years when he could have returned. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, it says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, the Bible says, Faithful is either call it you who also will do it. Yes. You see, the faithful ones have uh, come from the point that, listen, hey, if you were to ask this morning, Pastor, don't you have faith? I got fears, but I overcome my fears by faith. Amen. God has not given us the spirit of fear. The Bible says, hey, but uh, they didn't stay in their fear. Hey, they said, well, uh, uh, this may happen, but I believe that God's going to take care of me. And they moved on. Amen. They went into battle and fought. And they were the faithful ones. They stayed faithful. Let me ask you this morning, are you one of the faithful? Even though you've got fears, but how you one of the faithful, there you, you, you continue to serve God and stay faithful to God. You continue to live right and stay faithful to God. Are you one of the faithful? We see the, the fearful. We see the faithful. And lastly, we see the fruitful. The fruitful. You see, you cannot come. You cannot come. Okay, you cannot come to the point where you become 
fruitful if you're not forced faithful. We all have fears. But then when we overcome our fears, we continually follow God and stay faithful to God. You know what's going to happen? There's a chance that we'll become fruitful. And so what happened to these guys, hey, uh, uh, when God said, well, you go back home. Well, they may have fears, but they stay faithful. They say, well, we're going to be at the front line. We're going to serve God. We're going to uh, fight this battle. And then they stayed faithful to God. And what happened? They became fruitful. Amen. How did they become fruitful? Listen, they passed the test. They went to the battle and they came out with results. Amen. 300 people defeated the Midianites. 300 people went, uh, the Bible says uh, in Judges chapter 8 verse 4, it says, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and 300 men, they were with him, faint yet pursuing. You, you see, uh, uh, this is a picture of faithfulness. They continue to serve God. They continue uh, to be what God wants them to be. And then, and then finally, according to the story, hey, they got a lot of spoils and, and defeated the enemy and brought fruits. It's a result of their faithfulness. Amen. Listen, you can only be uh, fruitful if you are faithful. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in John 15, 5, he said, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide Amen. in me. The only way for us to be fruitful young people is we when we are faithful. Amen. We take our fears and put it aside, and then we become faithful to God. And then we will become fruitful. Amen. They have the victory. They won the battle. Amen. They become fruitful. I stand here this morning as a fruit of a missionary Amen. work 27 years ago in Nigeria. This missionary came in, started going out sowing. And, and on a Saturday, witness. Uh, gave us a gospel trial. I didn't, I didn't get saved on Saturday, but Sunday we went to church. And during the preaching of Sunday night, I heard the gospel. Amen. And I got baptized that same night. Amen. And ever since I, 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 I got baptized, I started pouring myself into the church, started going sowing in, started attending every services. Amen. Little did I know that God was preparing me. Amen. I got saved at 12. And God called a preacher at 14. Amen. Listen, if you're here tonight, you say, preacher, I'm just 12. Well, God can call you. You say, preacher, I'm just 14. Well, God can call you. You say, preacher, well, I'm just a boy. God can use you. Yeah. I became a boss captain. I became faithful to God. I didn't even know that God was going to use me. But I was faithful. Amen. I was faithful. Amen. I went to Bible college. I got trained started pastoring and working in different ministries, traveling all across Nigeria and all across uh, Africa, seeing souls saved, Amen. encouraging churches and pastors. But in all of this, when I was a boy, when I was 14, we had the Bible club that I would go to every Saturday. And we would reach out to children and, and teach them about uh, the Bible. And there was a little boy there it was about six at the time, and he started coming faithfully. He got saved. He started coming to church. He started riding on the bus to church, and he started maturing. And when it was time for me to go to Bible college, he still continued to go to church. He stayed faithful. And when I went up to Bible college and got back, God called him to preach. A Bible club child. God called him to preach. I have a wonderful privilege of even training him at the seminary. He came over to Abuja and he was trained there as a preacher. I stand there to tell you that this Bible club kid is now a pastor in a town in Nigeria. That's a fruit. 
Listen, uh, you may think, well, I don't think anything can come out of me trying to serve God, trying to uh, uh, be at the front line, trying to live my life. Listen, you may not see the fruit immediately. It may be until 20 years later. It may be until 27 years later. But listen, if you stay faithful to God, you will see the fruit. Would you stay faithful? Listen, this, mo uh, this morning, you can only find yourself among these three. Are you fearful? What is your biggest fear if God called you to preach this morning? Are you going to overcome your fear? He'll be with you. He'll take care of you. Hey, are, are you not only fearful? Are you going to stay faithful? If you stay faithful, he'll use you. And when you stay faithful, you know what? You'll become fruitful. You become fruitful. Amen. Who's here this morning is going to say, Preacher, I love this conference. I come here all the time. But I haven't seen myself being fruitful at all. I come to this conference. I, I hear preaching, but I haven't seen myself. Hey, I'm afraid of some things. But the only reason I'm not I'm leaving the life is because I'm afraid. You need to make a decision this morning. You didn't make a decision this morning. Listen, there's, there's a reason why God has put all this together. Maybe there's someone here and God is already speaking to your heart about going somewhere. Listen, it may not be Nigeria. Hey, it may be somewhere that God is calling you to go, but you're afraid. Amen. We have been called. Amen. And we have to say, Lord, here am I. Amen. Send me. May there be a preacher boy here this morning that will say, Lord, here am I. Send me. May there be someone that already made up their mind and say, well, I gave up a long time ago. Well, you need to make that decision again and say, Lord, use me. Use me. We're going to have an invitation this morning. Pastor, if you allow me, there are two things I'm going to say. And before we bow our heads, I want you to look at me. Think about it. If there's more than a dozen people here that God will send to Africa. Amen. Think about another Adewale Adeshino that could stand before you right. and say, hey, I'm a fruit Amen. of someone that's on the front line. Amen. That's fighting for God. That's living for God. I'm a fruit. Amen. And maybe God is calling you this morning. And you need to say, Lord, here am I. Or you say, well, pastor, I don't know for sure. Why don't you just come and say, Lord, what would you have me do? Amen. Lord, tell me to do something. Lord, hey, listen, uh, all those people, there are people there, uh, they, they came uh, until God said, well, I don't need that much. Why don't you just come and say, Lord, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. And I'm going to make that two statements as we have the invitation. There could be only three people, three kinds of people that come to the front line. The fearful, the faithful, and the fruitful. If you're here this morning, you say, Preacher, I'm, there are a lot of things I'm afraid about. I know there are parents here. I have, I have listened to some American missionaries that come and they say, Listen, our parents told us, if you go to Africa, then you don't love me. If your parents here this morning, you're also afraid. There's something you're afraid about. You're afraid that God may take your children from you. You're afraid that God may send them somewhere. Listen, and God gave them to you. Why not say this morning, Lord, I don't want to be afraid. If your parents, you also can come out. Well, wherever you call my children, whether home or abroad, Lord, I give it to you. Are you afraid? Oh, young people, we have been called to the front line. And they are the two statements. It's a preacher. I feel that God is calling me to preach. But I've been afraid a long time. Well, I feel that God is calling me to be a missionary somewhere. You know, we've got Pastor Brown here. You come over to this podium come over here this morning please don't sit down just come and and shake his hand and say I, I believe that God is calling me as a missionary I believe that God wants to use me somewhere I don't know but I believe he has plans for me would you come oh young people what are you afraid of we have been called in the second
second statement is maybe you've been serving God you've been faithful but you have not seen the fruit and you're discouraged well, let me tell you this morning there's going to be fruit stay faithful if you want to come also this morning and say I want God to help me to stay faithful so I can sit for would you come would you come here am I. Would you stand to your feet? Just listen for just a moment. Play very softly. There's a behind the scenes.